this is Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook and I am here after my workout this morning. I haven't changed yet so you got what you get um, but I'm here to do a book chat with you. I'm sorry I missed you guys on Friday. Friday my friend I haven't seen in over a year and a half um, was in town and we um, went and sat out by the lake and spread out the blanket and just caught up and it was so nice you know so I didn't get a chance to film on Friday. But I wanted to do a kind of different book chat with you guys. Usually I do my book chats and they are um, after I do my wrap up for the month. And I, you know, I know a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will do them as they read them. And I'm thinking, <laughs> this is a thought, that that is kind of a smart idea because if the longer I wait with the book, um, the further I get away from my memory of the book for number one. Um, my emotions with the book and so it's harder for me to kind of really recap and that's where my journal comes into play I usually write my review in here not always right after the book I've been trying to be better this year to, to do that um, sometimes I'm successful and sometimes I'm not but I figured <coughs> for this month <coughs> I'm gonna give it a try mm, I'm gonna give it a try and I'm going to try to do some of them as I finish them instead of waiting to the recap. In the recap, I'll still talk about them, but I just, I'll, I'll do like everybody else does, I'll refer back to the review if you want to hear my chat. Um, the two books, I'm going to do two books today, and the reason why I'm saying two is because I don't have a whole lot to say about either of them, and this isn't a slight on the books, it's just I figured I'd just do them both in one video, and I finished them both um, this past week, so it's it's also another good reason to do it that way as opposed to giving you another separate video. I don't feel like I have a lot of, of content to talk about. One book I have been talking to you about and the other is was a secret one that came about because I um, one of my um, uh, local libraries had the opportunity of, you could schedule to come in and pick out books and I had heard about this one and I ended up getting it. Um, I'll talk about that one first actually. And then I'll talk about the one that you guys do know. So this was a secret one, which is no longer a secret. And this one is called Leave the World Behind. Um, I guess it's a finalist for the National Book Award and it's by Rahman Alam. And he's also the, the author of Rich and Pretty, which I've never read that book before. Um, but this is a library book. It's only a seven days. That's why I had to kind of hustle on this one. Um, so this book, I'm going to give you a little, my little thoughts and description on it. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I think in terms of what I expected. So there's this, um, white couple, um, I'll say they're middle class. That's a, a husband and wife and, um, a daughter and a son, and they rent a home in, um, New York, a very beautiful, luxurious home for the week. And I, I want to say it's in Long Island. Long Island is it Long Island? Does it tell us? Yes, it's in Long Island. Yeah. Um, and you know, in the beginning of the book, you're kind of following um, the the mindset, so you kind of get an idea of the husband and wife and the kind of kind of the, the people that they are, um, and you get a little bit of, of the children as well. And when they get to the house, you know, they're really, you know, impressed with how it, how beautiful it is and everything. And I'm not going to, there's not a spoiler in this because I'm going to try to stick to kind of what they're telling you in here. So there's no, I'm not going to give you the ending or anything. Um, what ends up happening is that um, in the middle of the night or late in the night, I wanted to, I want to say it's the first night. Maybe it's not can't remember. See, this is exactly why I should do this earlier. But um, there's a knock at the door and they're like, we're in this, you know, kind of a secluded area. Nobody knows we're here. And who's knocking at the door? And what I did like about that is it kind of reminded me and there's that suspense and that, you know, well, what is it? I mean, although you did read a little bit here on the thing cover, you know, I thought he did a good job of it kind of building up the suspense in that. And there's a couple, there's a male's voice that, you know, is on the other side of the door. And it turns out they're a black couple. They're a bit older than the couple that are renting. And they claim that they own the house. 
Um, and so, um, oh, I forgot. I was going to write down the name of the book that this reminded me of initially too. Such a fun age. Remember the book that I read last year? Um, in the beginning, this kind of reminded me of that book because you then get the inner dialogue of both husband and wife of, you know, are these the owners of this house? And then you're like, well, you get all of their preconceived notions of, of these black people just based on their looking at them and saying, okay, they don't own this house. I mean, we're renting it just for a week. And, you know, they have to have a lot of money to own this house and blah, blah, blah. Um, so initially I thought it was going to be kind of like such a fun age and such a fun age was, um, remember there was the couple and for those of you that might not have read it and they had a nanny and there was this, um, whole, uh, background, you know, information that you keep hearing about them or their, or their thoughts that were just misconceptions, you know, that she thought she was doing the nanny a favor, the nanny, you know, and, and she had just all these ideas. <laughs> I have my neighbor's car alarm is going off. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you heard it, if you didn't, never mind. Um, so I thought it was going to be kind of like that. And to some degree it was because you explore the, uh, the, the racist beliefs, you know, to some extent that the wife had with regards to this couple. And the story kind of drags. This is what I want to say, because I don't want to talk, this, it's hard for me to talk about this book because you don't want to spoil, spoil it. Um, it kind of dragged out for the couple to explain who they were, why they were there. Um, and you really, we're like, well, really? Like, what else did you see? There wasn't really enough information to see the urgency of them coming back to their home in the middle of the people here that are renting. Um, I just have to say that I just was disappointed. I don't know what else to say. I don't know. I, You know, one of the things I was thinking about is like, you know, there's a, the author of the book, right? Then you have a person that writes this, and I don't know if they're the same, that writes the inner jacket here and here, but you know, like for example, on this one, sometimes it'll have the description, but right here, they're selling the book with quotes from other authors and sometimes it's newspapers. I think these are all other, yep, yeah, these are one, two, three, four, five other authors that are, you know, putting their two cents in here. And then you have your description here. I just felt like, um, Okay, this is what it says in here, right? On the, the last paragraph of it, it says, Suspenseful and provocative, Ruman Alam's third novel is keenly attuned to the complexities of parenthood, race, and class. Leave the World Behind explores how our closest bonds are reshaped and unexpected new ones forged in moments of crisis. That happens, right? You do explore the race issue and the class issue. Um, there was definitely that there. It does do this, right? The ending just was just so, what? You know, I like, I really like to have good endings to books. So when books do that, I guess I'm the type of person I'm kind of like, hmm. So I want to know if any of you have read this and if you enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if I'm even giving you a description of this book. I'm trying to be vague so that I don't, because it's, it's the premise and everything, the book, it, it, you, need, you need to experience it, I guess, to, you know what I mean? I don't want to spoil anything by saying too much detail. Um, I, I just found this to be like one of my not favorite books reads this month. Um, but I'm sure that again, you know, I always say, I don't want to say negative things or be mean or, you know, I feel cruel to say that. I just think that everybody has a different experience with the book because we're all coming at it from different things. We're coming off of different books. We're coming off of different things going in our life. Um, I, I do see where some, you know, some of the, the talk was that they mentioned in the sleeve in here came about in the book, but was it really worth it? Or, you know, would I seek out this had I known that that was what it was going to be? Um, no. Okay. So that's it on that one. So there's, there's that. <laughs> see, I still feel like I'm being mean. 
but I just wanted to just give my opinion. So that's Leave the World Behind by Rahman Alam. The other one is Dear Liberty with this beautiful, look at the beautiful cover. I pre-ordered it. I love historical fictions. I like the concept of it. Now, on again on the back here, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven authors. You know, really great authors are blurbing this book. I'm going to say something I said to my husband last night and he said, that's okay to say. It's not mean. It's just your thoughts of the book. The two words I feel is underwhelming and kind of simplistic. I just couldn't get myself attached to Liberty, who is the main character of this story. It is her and her mother in the beginning of the story. I believe it's set in, are they in New York? They're in Brooklyn. Um, and this is during the reconstruction area of Brooklyn. Um, and her name is Liberty Sampson and she lives with her mother and her mother is a physician. And um, her, her mother initially treats only people of color, but her mother is very, very light skinned. You don't really get a lot about the mother's background, but she's very fair skinned. So you, you um, assume that she's probably mixed, right? Or, and, um, and so initially she only treats um, people of color and then eventually she starts to decide that she's going to treat the people that are um, you know white people and her daughter is um, her, the is very dark-skinned and so the people are the daughter can recognize the the reactions some of the um, patients have to her versus how they react and respond to her mother so you get a bit of the colorism in there um, in the story so the mother really wants her daughter to kind of come up and become a physician like her and she gets her into school and she wants her to do that along the way you, there's other characters that come across in the story um that also i just didn't really get i didn't find myself attached to those characters so it made it really hard for me to kind of move. And I really thought I was still going to DNF the book. And then I said to myself this weekend, finish it. Just finish it so that you know what happens at the end because I had enough DNFs last month. Just know what happens at the end and maybe this will redeem itself. I will say it got a little bit, a little better um, in that she ends up, um, you know, she doesn't do well in school. There is a um, different people that she meets um, along the way, um, including her future husband. Um, I just, I don't know. I will give this author, this is a debut, I believe, chance. I would give them another chance. And the thing that makes me sad about not liking this, it says in here, in the jacket, right? In the good stuff right here. Inspired by the life of one of the first black female doctors in the United States, enriched with historical detail, Caitlin Greenidge's new, new and immersive novel will resonate with readers eager to understand our present through a deep, moving, lyrical dive into our complicated past. Liberty ends up meeting a man and then he's from Haiti and she ends up going to Haiti. And I, I felt like, I don't feel like the story did enough to, to educate. Uh, so she goes there I and mean, she arrives there. It's a little different than she expected. Um, and the dynamics between men and women there um, were different and she she didn't like necessarily that um, because she was built, you know, her mom has raised her to be a strong um, individual and independent also. And um, I just feel like it just, I feel like it missed the mark. It like, it was on the surface of things. It didn't go deep enough to give me any meat or context of history that I could pull from the book that be like, okay, you know, that I, was, I know colorism, colorism exists today. I know those, you know, I know the, the biases even today with, with people that not necessarily wanting to have a doctor, 
um, if, if they're white, might not have a, want to have a, feel comfortable having a doctor that's black, not feeling um, that they're, you know, um, they're qualified and all of that. Um, I just didn't, uh-uh, no one know her. No underwhelming for me. I stuck with it. I think it got a little bit better, but um, uh, the ending, again, these two, I was not pleased with the endings. I'm sorry. I don't know how I wanted this to end. I mean, yeah, I don't know. So these two were not my favorite this month, but I know that somebody will love them. I know some of you love the books. Obviously, these authors in the back do, but it just makes me think. It's like, you know, I mean, it's a marketing game. Sometimes, you know, are people really like, you know, do people before they put their, 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 you know, their basically sign off on the back of a book, do they really think about it before they do it? Do they really mean it? Is it just, well, hey, this person's coming out and you want to be supportive? It's good to be supportive of new authors. And this is not a debut, but this one is. Um, and I am all for it. And I'll check out the next book and see what she does when she does the next book. But it doesn't mean that the book is great or that it's going to resonate with everybody. So, yeah, I feel hateful to say that. I feel it's mean. But I just want to be honest. When I like books, I like books. I rave about books. When books don't work for me, I usually DNF them. Um, and I usually don't talk about books that fall in this kind of middle category. They weren't so terrible, but they just were underwhelming is my best word. I said, that's Tara, one of the followers here. And she's like, yeah, it's okay to say that. And I think it's, that's where I am with these two. So there's these two books. I am continuing to read my other books and I will get to you guys on Friday for sure this week and, and, um, catch you up. I should be almost done by then with, um, some other things. And I hope you guys are well. I hope I didn't talk too long. I just feel bad, but I, you know, I just wanted to, you know, what do you think about that? You know, like, you get all these big names blurbing books. That's that's big, and it helps sell books. But are the books that they're selling worthy of the praise? And and I feel bad about that. I feel bad now. I feel bad that I did this. But anyway, those are two books that I've read, and I will talk to you guys on Friday about some other books. I hope you guys are well, and I will talk to you soon. And I'm sorry about the exercise clothes, but I'm gonna go shower now. Bye.